Databases. A database seminar series at Carnegie Mellon University is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Funding for this program is made possible by Ottertune. Google. We're, we're super happy to hear today have Charlie Yang uh, from Alibaba Notion Base come give a talk about their system. Um, so we appreciate Charlie being with us because uh, it is he's currently in China and it's 4 a.m. So I think he holds the record for the staying the latest up the latest for uh, giving a talk with us. So I think the record with somebody in India was 2 or 3, 3 a.m. Um, so again, Charlie, thank, thank you for doing this and being with us. Uh, as always, as Charlie's giving the talk, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and ask at any time. We want this to be a conversation for him, and not him, talk, not just talking by himself. Uh, to himself for, for Zoom for an hour. Thank you, Andy, and hello, everyone. Uh, because I'm not a native speaker, so uh, I think maybe when you ask a question, I may need uh, maybe more need more time than usual to answer the question. So I will say solid at first. And my, my tech talk is about the architecture inside of OceanBase. And OceanBase is some kind of like Google's banner and is, is a distributed circle database. We have two colleagues. I, I am the CTO of OceanBase and we have another colleague, Guo Ping Wang. He is the circle leader of OceanBase and we will answer the question together. Okay, and my tech talk consists of four parts. Firstly, I will briefly introduce OceanBase and then the design overview of our distributed engine that is uh, the the lower layer of ocean base and then the design overview of our edge tab engine that is the upper lower of ocean base and finally i will introduce the tbcc benchmark of our, our ocean base uh before my tech talk i would like to uh, introduce the mobile payment in china when you go to some city in china for example i in hangzhou and when you go to hangzhou in china nobody take cash even a beggar on the street, a homeless on the street, they will give you a QR code. So you can just scan the QR code to finish the, the online payment. And the right chart comes from double 11 day. As the exact first second of 12 o'clock PM on the double 11 day, the, the payment traffic surged for about dozens of times and it lasts for about several minutes. So I, I think this, uh, case is very challenging, especially to the infrastructure and to the database, according to the scalability problem, the consistency problem, and the high concurrency handling problem. So we also we designed it to develop an ocean-based database starting from 2010. It is a distributed circle database. Now, ocean-based serves all payment requests of Alipay since 2017. And on double 11 day of 2019, the peak QPS of Ocean Base has reached 61 million. Besides Alibaba and Alipay, Ocean Base is also used by more than 500 customers in mission critical scenarios such as payment, accounting, uh, customer information, and so on. Ocean Base has set the TBCC number one and TBCH number two on the 30,000 gigabyte data set were official world record. Ocean base, uh, the main scenario of Ocean base is scalable OLTP and HTAP. Uh, you know, Ocean base is a liner scalable distributed database with strong consistency and high availability. So it's very useful in some scenarios such as double 11 day, Black Friday, promoting a new product, and so on. Ocean base is also useful in real-time operational analytics scenarios in one unified system with scalable OLTP workload. Uh, this case contains, for example, uh, when a user finish a transaction on the double 11 day, the merchant want to change their promoting strategy immediately. So it's very useful uh, if we support edge type features. And OceanBase is compatible to MySQL database with high performance and much lower cost. In Alipay, we migrated all, Ocean, all, all MySQL database and all Oracle database, of course, 
to ocean base and the storage cost of ocean base is just one third of MySQL database. Ocean base is used in all mission critical systems in Alipay, such as trade, payment, accounting, thief, which represents customer information, promotion, real time data serving. As I mentioned before, the peak performance is 61 million QBS, and we have many clusters in Alipay. One maximum cluster has more than 200 nodes in one cluster and more than six petabyte storage of data. And one single table has more than 320 billions of rows in our real work, work in our real production. And OceanBase uses Paxos to achieve high availability. We we have uh, we uh, and RPO equals zero, RPO less than 30 seconds. RPO represents recovery point objective and RTO represents recovery time objective. So it means that in case of a failure, no matter server failure or IDC failure, or even the CT failure, OceanBase can recover in less than 30 seconds without any data loss. What, what, is, your, what uh, is your P99 for this, for this database here? Uh, pardon me? What is, what is your, what, what is your, what is your 99 percentile latency for transactions? In, or, Okay, the latency, right? Yeah, uh, in Alipay, each transaction, for example, a payment transaction has for about less than 20 circle statement. And each circle statement in Ocean Base for about less than one millisecond latency. Have I answered your questions, Andy? Yes, uh, yeah, so, the, so less than one millisecond per query but like when you go to commit, like how how much time does it take to complete the commit? So maybe the okay. one payment transaction is 20 queries, say round up, it's 20 milliseconds on average for the commit the transaction. Oh, uh, in Alipay, we use micro service in our application. That, that is, uh, for example, we have a payment transaction, the payments will need several application systems. And a payment okay. transaction has a total for about 20, uh, 200, for about 200 SQL in Ocean Base. And so each transaction of, uh, from the, the view of application, each transaction for about uh, uh, less than 100 seconds. Yeah, because each circle in Ocean Base takes less than one millisecond, actually less than 0 0.5 millisecond. I got it, okay. Okay. I think I understand. Thank you. Thank you. OpenBase is also used by more than 500 customers in mission critical systems. In finance industry, OceanBase is used in debit and credit card transaction billing accounting systems such as ICBC. ICBC is the largest bank in China, and uh, China Constru Construction Bank is the second largest bank in China, and also some other banks, some other the financial companies. Ocean Base is also used in telecom industry, in mission critical boards and CRM systems such as China Mobile, China Telecom, and so on. Besides finance and telecom industry, Ocean Base is also used in lots of high tech industry, high concurrency scenarios, payment accounting, customer information systems such as Alipay, Alibaba, C Trip, Gcash, and lots of customers. Uh, let's talk about the design goals of Ocean Base. You know, the monolithic database, such as MySQL and Oracle, they have full circle functionality, and the performance of single node is very, very high. On the other hand, the distributed storage system, they support some useful features, such as high scalability, high availability, such as big table, HBase, DynamoDB, but they do not support full circle functionality. They just support a simple key value API or limited circle functionality. And yes, we have some distributed circle database, such as Cockroach DB, TiDB, Google Spanner. They support both high scalability and full circle functionality. But the single node performance of Cockroach DB or TiDB are very low compared to MySQL, maybe just one third of MySQL database. In Ocean Base, we need high scalability, we need 
for single functionality, and we also need high performance of a single node. So you can see Ocean Base as a distributed circle database with full circle support and high performance of single node. We, uh, we have published our TBCC benchmark result. In 2019, we published our TBCC benchmark that is more than 60 million TBMC and ranked number one at that time. In 2020, we published a better TBCC result that is 707 million TBMC and ranked number one again. In 2021, we published our TBCH result that is uh, more than 15 million QBHH on the 30,000 gigabyte data set and ranked number one at that time. But unfortunately, just after two weeks, another database company, I think you may be very familiar, is called Exor. Exor published a better TBCH result on the same data set. And from now, for, for then, we ranked the number two until now. Let's talk about the design overview of our lower layer. In ocean based, uh, each cluster consists of several zones in one or multiple regions. And we have a row called OP proxy. From the name, you can see that it's used to uh, load requests to ocean based, ocean based server according to the, the location info of each partition. And each ocean based server is similar to a classical RDBMS. It will compile circle statement to produce a circle execution plane and then execute that plane. And that is only one ocean-based server. You will be elected to host root service. I think this design is a little different from the other distributed storage system because in a typical distributed storage system, the root service used as scheduling, global scheduling or global management, you will be, you will be hosted in an independent process. But in ocean base is integrated to ocean based server. Why? Because if ocean base may be deployed in just one machine, one machine deployment. So if we have only one process, one machine, uh, one machine deployment may be much easier for user. Redo logs are replicated among the zones using Paxos, and there are two kinds of transaction. Uh, if the transaction is for one partition, it's executed locally. But if the transaction is for multiple partitions, no matter multiple partitions in one server or across several servers, it's executed using two-phase commit. Let me explain some basic concept at first. Each cluster has multiple zones, and you can think a zone in OceanBase as an availability zone. In most cases, it's an IDC. And each zone has multiple ocean based servers, and we have a concept called a resource pool. Ocean based is a multi tenant architecture, and each resource pool has multiple resource units. Each resource unit can be hosted only in only one ocean based server. Uh, you can think ocean based as an independent, uh, independent MySQL instance in the AWS RDS. So a tenant in ocean based. It has its own database, and each database has its own table, and each table has its own partition, and each partition can be replicated into several replicas. Uh, so OceanBase divides each cluster into multiple resource pools owned by tenants. Resource isolation in OceanBase is done internally by the database, not by the container or by the virtual machine at the operating system level. In ocean base, we use two level partitioning. Uh, that is hash partition, range partition, or hash partition as the first level and range partition as the second level, and vice versa. And we have a concept called partition group. It's used to do co-location. And several partitions on the same partition group will be located on the same machine. Main table in ocean base is used to maintain the location of each partition replica and the underlying mechanism of mandate table is the same as the normal user table. We can also use the SQL query to query and modify the mandate table. So the mandate table in Ocean Base is also scalable like the normal user table. Load service will do the load balance, such as global management, partition movement, load replication, leader switch, uh, similar to the, the other distributed storage system. Okay. 
we use pack source to achieve high availability. You know, pack source is a column based consensus protocol, and each replica in Ocean Base should be replicated, replicated to the majority of majority of the uh, replicas, such as uh, two. That means two replicas out of three, or three replicas out of five in our typical deployment. And we, as I mentioned before, we use Paxos to achieve high availability. That is one component which is very special in Ocean Base. It is data consistency check. As you know, database is a very complicated system and maybe we have software bug, especially data consistency, data consistency like bug. So in Ocean Base, we can detect this kind of bug automatically by the system itself. In transaction level, Ocean Base verifies the cumulative checksum of each transaction. It means that in case we have some maybe concurrency related bugs, Ocean Base can detect automatically because it will because of the transaction level checksum. In replica so, level, what, what, what do you check something? You check something the data that the transaction wrote to or read to. Like uh, you know, what is the what do you, like what's the cumulative checksum? Yes, we check some the data. Yeah, each time we do a transaction, we will, uh, when the transaction maybe modify some rules, we will then check some the row or the, the, all the data of that row. And then the cumulative checks on is the cumulative of all rows modified by all transactions. So you're comparing the checksum of, of the, is it active active or they comparing Check some of the transaction running here and the transaction running like the same transaction running two different locations. We're just checking that like, yeah, is it kind of like a Merkle tree where things are happening in, in the incremental order correctly? Oh no no no, uh, because uh, in Ocean Base we use uh, Paxos, so each partition has several replicas, right? So each replica will do the same transaction. So okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In replica yeah. level. Okay. Thank you. In replica yeah. level, we, we also verify the checksum of each replica after the major compaction. You can think a major compaction as a global snapshot. All the replica will do the same thing at the same time. And it's executed uh, once a day in our typical deployment. Uh, during this major compaction, we will do replica level checksum. Uh, it means that uh, we will check down several replica. We will compare the checksum of several replicas in the for the same replica, for the same partition, and we also compare the checksum of the base, base table and the index table. In this level, we will verify the checksum of each block after we read or write from that block. Let's talk about the distributed transaction. We use two-phase commit to achieve atomic distributed transaction. Uh, the left chart is an example. Alice wants to transfer Ten dollar to Bob, and when we commit the transaction, OceanBase will initiate a two-phase commit in the background automatically. Let let this do prepare as a first phase, and then after all participants has finished the prepare phase, and then do commit phase as a second to commit as a second phase. Let there are two problems in two-phase commit. The first first problem is global transaction service GTS. In Ocean Base, we use a timestamp, like, like we use a mechanism like timestamp oracle. So um, to avoid the timestamp oracle becomes the bottleneck of the system. All GTS uh, on the same Ocean Base server are batched to reduce the number of requests. And the second problem is transaction latency. In a traditional two-phase commit, I think you may be uh, very familiar. We need to wait for the coordinator to write a global commit log to make sure that the global transaction is persisted. And then after the prepare phase, and then we can respond to the user. But in Ocean Base two phase commit, we can respond to user immediately after the prepare phase. It means that after all participants has have finished the prepare phase, they will they, yeah, and yes, they will write the Paxos log in each participant. After they have finished the prepare phase, we can respond to the user immediately. So in our failure recovery phase, it may be more difficult because in our failure recovery 
space, we have no global commit log. So we need to collect all local status from all participants to design whether to commit the global transaction or just roll back it. Okay. Okay. Uh, our uh, the isolation level of ocean base is snapshot isolation. We use multi-version concurrency control MVCC to make sure that the read queries will not be blocked by the read queries. That is a famous problem called the right skew problem. For example, if we have a equals one and b equals one, and we have two concurrent transactions, a equals plus b plus one and b equals a plus one, and maybe in snapshot isolation level. A equals two and B equals two. Finally, I think this result is very strange because it does not equivalent to any sequential execution of these two concurrent transactions. So in ocean base, we support another mechanism called a low lock. We use low lock to avoid the right skill in our typical workload. That means a user can use a SQL dialect like Select from some table for update to explicitly explicitly use low lock. Let's talk about the linearizability, which is very important in a distributed circle database. I will give you an example at first to explain what, what is linearizability. For example, Alice runs a circle select statement wants to select from some table, but doesn't get a response yet. And then I run the uh, insert statement to insert one row into that table and commits. And Bob runs another st insert statement and insert another row and commits again. Maybe finally, Alice's query returns and she gets Bob's row but not mine. This behavior is very strange. It is a violation of linearizability because my Transaction happens first, then Bob's transaction, but Alice can only see Bob's transaction, but not my transaction. So this is because in our distributed system, every uh, the, the, the different server does not have different time. In ocean based and in tight DB, we use GTS to achieve linearizability. In Google Cloud Spanner, it, ha it has a very famous mechanism, I think. You may be very familiar with chill time. You use chill time to achieve linearizability. The plus of chill time is that it can be, a, it, it's, it supports global transaction. But in GTS, we cannot support global transaction because of the latency. But the side effect of GTS is that each transaction need commit away. It must wait for about seven to 10 milliseconds in Google Spanner. Cocklogic DB use another mechanism called HLC, hybrid logic lock. But hybrid logic lock still has time deviation. That means that if the time of two events, the HLC time of two events are very, very close, Cocklogic DB cannot design which event happens first. So Cocklogic DB cannot solve the linearizability problem. Yes. The storage engine in ocean base is an LSM tree. We have memory table, SS table, like a typical LSM tree implementation. We have two kinds of compaction, minor compaction and major compaction. Minor compaction is used to dump memory table into SS table. And the major compaction is used to merge, merge major SS table and several minor SS table into one single SS table. And in our memory table, we maintain two index concurrently, which is different from other LSM3 implementation, B3 index and hash index. I think uh, in our real workload, hash index is very important because we have so many single load get query. And as the table is divided into data blocks, we have two kinds of data blocks, macro block and micro block. Macro block is mostly two megabytes is the unit of write. Uh, only modified macro block need to be rewritten during compaction in ocean base. This is different from the other LSM3 implementation. For example, in RocksDB, each time we do compaction, the whole asset table should be 
relightened, but in ocean base, only modified micro blocks need to be relightened. The micro block is mostly eight kilobyte to 512 kilobyte, which is very similar to data page, data block in MySQL or PostgreSQL. circle. It's the unit of read, and it's also the, the encoding and the compression unit and we support low cache and block cache like typical ASMR implementation. Okay. We use two level compression in ocean base. Ocean based specific compression method, we call it encoding as the first level. And after the data is encoded, we will use a general compression as the second level. We support different kinds of encoding methods such as direct, Dictionary, IRE, const, difference, prefix, and so on. And we also support some cross column encoding methods. For example, columns equals or column prefix. I have two charts in, in, in the bottom of my slide. Uh, column, in, in our workload of Alipay, we found that several columns in our table is very similar. So we developed column equals or column prefix encoding methods. And the general compression, we support CSTD LZ4, Snappy, ZLib, and finally we use CSTD by default because the compression ratio of CSTD and ZLib is higher than the other compression method and CSTD is faster than ZLib. Okay. Hey, I have a question here. So um, I assume your LSM tree is using like a key value model and how do you store relational data like a table in this key value model? Like in TiDB, you have key as the primary key and the value as all the columns. So what does OceanBase do? In TiDB, we have key as the... Uh... Uh, yeah, I think it's not a simple key value model in ocean base. The key is the primary key, but uh, the value we contain several columns. Yeah, we, we contain, uh, I think it's our, our, uh, our storage format, I think uh, is a little similar to traditional database. Yep. Yeah. And we can support some operations such as uh, find a column. We have a column index in our uh, value. So is column, I think you may be very familiar, column index is used in traditional database, not in uh, asymmetry implementation. Uh, yeah. Our storage, you can think of it as a combination of LSM tree and traditional B tree implementation. For example, in ocean based, uh, we have macro block. Is uh, it comes from a traditional B three implementation? Okay, ocean based supports online schema change. Online schema change is very important in our workload because a DBA, if we, a DBA does a DDL operation, we must make sure that the DDL operation will not affect the online business. We support. We, we, we support online schema change by the multi-version schema mechanism. OceanBase allow rollout of a new schema while the older version is still in use. It's like some other systems such as Google F1 or the other distributed server database. And in OceanBase, we support circle plan management. Uh, when a DBA does a DDL operation, we have new circle physical plan, but OceanBase will not switch the traffic to the new plane immediately. We will switch the traffic to the new plane step by step, 1% at first and then 5% and 10% and, and so on. And after the new plan has been proven to be better than the old plan, we will replace the old plan with the new plan and also the old baseline with the new baseline. The index maintenance in ocean base is very similar to a system Google F1. In index maintenance operation, we must make sure that the user can always read an index which is consistency with the base table. Base table. So when we add index, we will grant write capability and backfill the index state at first. After the index table is 
consistency is consistent with the base table, we can grant read capability at last. The drop index operation is vice versa. We will revoke read capability at first to make sure that the index table will not be read anymore. And then we can revoke write capability and push the index data. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the HTAP engine. Because of the limited time, I will not dig into uh, much detail of our SQL engine. And uh, our SQL leader is also online. So if you have any problem related to our SQL engine, you can just uh, uh, unmute and speak the, your questions. How does industry build uh, HTAP system? I, I think HTAP system is uh, a combination of OLTP system like Oracle or OLAP system like Impala. OceanBase is a distributed HTAP uh, SQL database. So our SQL engine will be, our, our SQL engine is a little similar to Oracle parallel execution engine. But uh, the difference is that we need to consider two problems. The first problem is the network because we are a distributed system. The second problem is HTAP workload. We need to consider both OLTP and OIAP workload. We have several replicas and each replica can, can do different things. There are several challenges in HTAP. How is they organized? Low store or column store? How are resource isolated? How to guarantee the OLTP and OIAP query performance in the same system? How does the optimizer choose the data access model? and how to choose the execution engine and so on. In OceanBase, how to handle the HTAP storage problem? Uh, as you know, OceanBase uses Paxos, so we have always several replicas in our system. We can always use several replicas to do OITP and several replicas to do OIAP. If the OIAP workload is very heavy, we will use individual replica to process OIAP query. And it's some kind of like a combination of low star plus column star. Some replica use low star and some replica use column star. But if the OIAP query is light, OceanBase just process OITP and OIAP on the same replica. It's a mixed low columnar storage. So it's uh, some kind of like packs. Uh, let's talk about the resource isolation. In OceanBase, we have a concept in each tenant, we call it resource group. The OITB and OIAP query can be hosted in different resource group. group. We use resource group based logic isolation. There are several resources, CPU, disk, memory, and network. CPUs are isolated through Linux C group. Disks are isolated through user-level I/O scheduling, which is developed by ourselves. Memory and network isolation is not uh, are not supported now, but I, I will add uh, the network and memory isolation in our future version. In HTAP, the circle optimize optimizer should be exceptionally smart. OceanBase will use cost-based optimizer. It's a bottom-up bottom uh, system I like optimizer. And our optimizer will choose different execution engines, storage engine, plan caching methods, and so on. For example, we will choose whether to use the low store or column store, which replica, and whether to execute in our serial, serial execution engine or parallel execution engine, and whether to do plan cache. In OITP workload, plan catch is very, very useful, but in OIAP workload, I think it's not useful. Uh, the, the parallel execution framework, framework has a great overhead for distributed OITP queries because of the plan serialization overhead or, and execution startup overlap. So in OceanBase, the optimizer needs to generate a plan based on the scenario. If the query is very big, we will consider it as an OIAP query and 
generally a parallel execution plane, but if the query is uh, very light, is a small query, like single low gain or several low, low scan, we will generate a serial execution plane and it's executed using BAS. BAS is a module of ocean base. Uh, the performance key points of OLTP and OLAP is different. The performance key point of OLTP is, 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 is execution overhead, but the performance key point of OLAP is efficient pipeline, parallel execution, vector execution, and so on. And the OLTP needs high concurrency, low latency. OLAP needs low concurrency, high latency, and so on. So in our OLTP queries, the execution logic is ship data, ship data. But in our OLAP queries, the execution logic is ship function. This is different. For example, in our serial execution, we have a module called DAS, I have mentioned before. Thus, will be used to ship data instead of ship function. In ocean base, the data is distributed on different machines, and in our OLTP workload, the amount of data accessed is very small. So the bottleneck is the overhead of our execution uh, framework in serial execution. So in order to eliminate the overhead of parallel execution, we just ship data instead of ship function. We will not push uh, the single execution play in our DAS implementation. We have a DAS independent DAS layer in encapsulates data remote access capabilities such as index scan, remote scan, we just ship data. And it encapsulates some transaction control logic such as triggers, constraints, and so on. OLTP logic is very complicated, such as trigger, constraints, following key, and so on. In our parallel execution, we have supported the distributed plan. A distributed plan is divided into multiple DFO state flow op operators based on the date transmitter, transmit operators, exchange operators. Exchange operator is used to shuffle data between machines. Our parallel execution framework is very similar to Oracle. A DFO is a basic execu parallel execution unit and has its own parallel degree. It's ex executed in, the, in one ocean-based server and query coordinator is in charge of DFO scheduling. I have an example in the right chart, which is an example of a, a distributed plan of a, a join. So finally, I will talk about the TBCC benchmark in our ocean base. We have published our industry paper in uh, we are, we are this year. In TBCC benchmark, we have five types of transaction, new order payment, order status, order delivery, stock level, and the TBMC is used as the, uh, the, the TBMC in TBCC, which represents the number of new order transactions per minute. And in TBCC benchmark, the percentage of new order must be less than 45%. And TBCC benchmark has also specified the storage. In TBCC, each warehouse produces at most 12.86 TBMC. That means that if we want to produce 7 or 7 million TBMC, we need at least 75 million warehouse, that is for about four petabyte storage of data in just one replica. And TBCC also specified close warehouse transaction. Close warehouse transaction in distributed circuit database means distributed transaction. The distributed transaction ratio in TBCC of new order is 10% and payment is 15%. The isolation level of TBCC is ANSYC serializable. And I think you may be very familiar. ANSYC serializable allow right skill problem. Yeah. And TBCC must run at least two hours. The performance jitter should be less than 2%. And in our benchmark configuration, we have a total of more than 2,000 
virtual uh, cloud virtual server, ocean based TB TB test is hosted on the Alibaba cloud, and we have more than fifteen hundreds of ocean based servers and several client RTE and several web servers and several monitor servers. Our TBCD benchmark runs for about eight hours because uh, uh, it's the first distributed circle database in TBCD test. So we we we, we run uh, longer, we run eight hours, not two hours. And we have for about more than 55 million warehouses in our TBCD test. We have several challenges in our TBCD test. The first challenge is durability requirement. Uh, because we use Paxos, so we need at least three replicas. In our TBCC deployment, we use two data replicas and one log replica because we, does, we do not have enough storage if we use three data replicas. And the second challenge is loading initial data. Loading initial data in TBCD benchmark is not trivial because the data is so huge. In one replica, we have for about four petabyte storage of data, and we have so many servers in our ocean-based database cluster. So it's configured as one replica and no logging at first, and loads are batch inserted into the ocean-based database. After all loads are inserted into our database, we will replicate to partition replication to get two data replicas and one log log replica. And in TPC test, that is a table called item table. Item table is read by every new order transaction, but that is no write during the test. So item table is replicated to every server in a cascade manner because we have so many ocean-based servers. So we must do it in a cascade manner. The valuation of the performance throughput, the TBMC jitter should be less than 2%. This is a very challenge to an LSM tree like storage engine. So we use a fine-tuned compaction strategy. We tuned the compaction strategy for, for a long time, for so long time. And there are some CPU threats for the background operations are reserved in our TBCC configuration. As I remember, we reserved for about 20% CPU to do all background operations such as compaction, data replication, and so on. This is the TBCC result. The TPMC from this chart, you can see, you can see that the TBCC performance is Linux scalable. When we need more TBMC, we can just add more ocean-based servers and the performance will speed up linearly. This is the, our result of TBMC Jitter. Uh, from this chart, you can see, see the smallest and largest top Jitter are 0 0.03 and 0.37% respectively. And the smallest and largest bottom jitter are the minus 0.03 and minus 0.81 respectively. So the jitter of ocean base is less than 2% and we can meet the TBCC specification. This is the result of our durability test of our TBCC benchmark. In TBCC, we need to kill all loads of a database. In OceanBase, we have several loads, root service, GTS, global transaction service, and OceanBase server, a normal OceanBase server. GTS, global transaction server in OceanBase is integrated into the root service. So we can just kill root service and kill a normal OceanBase server to verify the durability feature of OceanBase. In our test, we run for about eight hours. And in our durability test, test, we run for about less than two hours durability test. We kill load service at the first and then kill load ocean based server at the second, at the second phase. When we kill load service at the first, you can see from the graph that ocean based recover immediately because although load service has GTS, it does not have a normal partition. 
partition, so it can recover immediately. And our GTS service used a spe specific Paxos election mass algorithm, not, not normal Paxos, uh, Paxos algorithm, like normal parti partition. And in our, and when we kill a uh, OB server, ocean base recovers in several tens of seconds without any data loss. And you can see from the chart that the performance will not drop to zero because each OB server just have a portion of our partitions. It does not have the whole partitions. So it's a distributed circuit database. So only a few partitions in our ocean base are affected. Okay, so because of the limited time, I will not dig into uh, very much detail of ocean base. So if you have any questions, I I am Guoping Wang. We would we are very glad to to talk with you. I right. applaud. Thank you so much for spending time with us. All right, we have uh, a few minutes for questions. So if anybody has them, uh, go for it. I will say there was one uh, from Creedy earlier. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask it? Uh, yep. Hi, uh, Jolly. Thank you for this talk. Uh, so when you uh, talk about the storage engine, uh, you say you're using micro and macro blocks. OK. You mean the storage engine of macro block and micro block? Yes. So uh, this is to optimize uh, disk access during reads and writes, yes. Uh, you mean it's an uh, optimized version of AI symmetry? Oh, I see. It's um okay. I think I'm confusing it with something else. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the 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 difference of ocean based AI symmetry and a uh, normal AI symmetry implementation implementation I think is the macro block. So in a typical AI symmetry implementation, there is no macro block. It just has micro block, right? Because each time we do compaction in a typical AI symmetry, which uh, uh, the whole asset table is rewritten. But in ocean based, only macro blocks need to be rewritten. In our typical workload. For example, in our workload in the Alipay, when we do compaction, only for about in, in a typical workload, only maybe less than one half blocks are rewritten. So we save a lot of CPU cost. And especially in some write heavy workload, for example, uh, mm. a lot of write heavy workload, the write is, is some kind of like very sequential. Yes. Very sequential. So lots of macro block they are not modified. So uh, the mechanism of ocean based macro block is very efficient. Um, I have a follow up question here. So okay. do you like keep orders across macro blocks because in traditional LSM tree systems, inside one sorted string file, you will see all the key value pairs in order. But now you have macro blocks. So do you like keep orders between those macro blocks? Or when you want to do some range scan, you will need to merge a lot of blocks because now the minimum like unit of sorted things is macro block, which is two megabytes instead of an SST file. Okay. Although macro block is uh, two megabytes, yes, yeah, the, the size is relatively large, right? But uh, we also maintain the order between macro blocks. Oh, that sounds interesting. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Plus, there is no cost to maintain the order of macro block. Why? Because each time, uh, each time we do a compaction, right? We will scan all the macro block, and when we find some macro block is not rewritten, we just we just does anything, but we find some macro block is rewritten. We will write a new macro block, and we will maintain the index of the macro block. So the index of macro block they maintain the order using the primary key order. Oh, that sounds interesting. Thank you. Okay. 
All right, Gavin, go for it. Yeah. Uh, can you folks hear me, or does my microphone not work? I mean, if you speak a little louder, you'd be okay. Okay. Um, yeah, but thanks for the presentation. My question was, do you use any libraries to interact with the um, disk directly, like the NVMe drive? So something like uh, SPDK or anything like that? Or do you just use regular like uh, pread and pwrite? Yeah, we just uh, use direct IO. And in most cases, I think it is pread or pwrite. Yeah, we have... Uh, we have tried SBDK or some maybe VM and no volatile memory uh, and so new hardware, yeah. But we find that in our typical workload is not useful because in our typical workload of Alipay, the bottleneck is the storage. The bottleneck is the storage, not the IOPS. It's the storage capacity. So compression is very useful. It's very, very important. But uh, the, because we use a, a very fast SSD in our in Alipay, so period or period is enough in our workload. We do not need, so we, we don't need SPDK or other uh, new hardware. But I think maybe after Ocean Base, uh, it's migrated to the cloud environment, SBDK or RDMA, they may be, become more important. Okay, thank you. That that was really interesting. All right, any other questions from the audience? Um, so my, uh, so my, my first question is, I mean, the system is stable, you're running Alipay off of it. Uh, What's sort of the major? What's the next sort of major challenge you feel feel like you guys need to tackle? Is it, uh, is it the back end of the system, or is it like SQL compatibility with Oracle and MySQL, or is it improving the query optimizer? What like, what's the major thing that like okay, like we need to spend a lot of time on this because like it sounds like this LSM, this distributed architecture you have is, is like you're not going to rewrite any of this anytime soon. So what's the next big challenge for you guys? Okay, the next big challenge. I, I, I very like. I would like very like to introduce the challenge before. Yeah, when we migrate, when we use Ocean Base in Alipay, there are lots of challenge. I think the most uh challenge in Alipay, several years ago, yeah, is the consistency and stability, stability problem, because it's a database. In Alipay, uh, when we are used in Alipay. In our first application, we have we, we must make sure that there is no almost no bug in our online system because it's used in mission critical uh, scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we does a lot of things such as code review, um, lots of tests such as uh, pressure test, the failure test, and so a lot of lots of tests and. And we also uh, we also test the real workload in our offline environment. Yeah, that's lots of things. And I remember that I almost reviewed every code during that time. At that time, uh, a lot of code. But in okay, our future, yeah, <laughs> in, in our in the future, I think there are also some other challenges. I think uh, the future challenges comes from loss of function. For example, as and you have talked as the capability, compatibility problem, like like uh, lots of uh, lots of customers outside Alipay, they will uh, they will have lots of uh, compatibility related requirement. In our in customer in China is uh, the, the customer in China I think is a little special. The customer in China need don't want to change any code in their application, any code. So OceanBase is compatible to MySQL, it's open sourced, it's compatible to MySQL, but in our, in our uh, OceanBase is also compatible to Oracle, which is not open source. Yeah, mm -hmm. even an Oracle user, they doesn't want to change any application code. They, they will find us and find our support team 
to migrate the data for them and migrate the application for them. So that's a lot of challenge. And we also, in our future, we also will focus on some areas such as HTAP. We will uh, improve uh, the performance of our OLAP, especially real-time OLAP performance. And also some cloud features such as how to make ocean-based serverless, how to be make ocean-based more cost efficient on the cloud. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I wouldn't say the uh, I wouldn't say an application developer telling you they don't want to have to change your application to use your database is unique to China, right? That's pretty much almost everyone, right? Uh, so I guess now related to this, my last question would be my, my last question is related to this, last, this compatibility point. Which of the two is actually harder to support, MySQL or Oracle? I'm guessing Oracle, but I I want to get your take on understand why. Like what, what is it about that makes it so much harder? Oh, the answer is very straightforward. Oracle is, uh, the compatibility feature of Oracle is much more than MySQL. Yeah, mm -hmm. as, as we have a <laughs> static, that is the, the feature of Oracle is uh, for about three times of MySQL database. Yeah, but uh, MySQL compatibility, when we support MySQL compatibility, that is also some uh, interesting problem. For example, when we support MySQL, we found that MySQL database has lots of bugs, for about several hundreds of bugs. And ocean-based team, we submitted the bugs to the ocean-based community. But ocean -based, uh, the MySQL community, they admit that some bugs, but the other bugs, they does not admit. They, they say that is the user has has a customer to this has used to these kinds of bugs, so it's a feature. So in ocean base where we support MySQL, compatible with MySQL, we're also compatible with some bugs actually in MySQL. But uh, MySQL users are very uh, used to it. Yeah, it's very interesting. Okay, I guess my my last question would be, and I'll have she my my student translate for me. Um, do you have to license? like something from Oracle to be allowed to, to have SQL compatibility and a catalog compatibility, but they're notorious for suing people if they copy things. You you mean uh, the maybe patient or license, uh, this kind of problem, right? Yeah, like Oracle will sue you. I, there's been past with like companies have copied like Oracle's wire protocol and they, they will sue you. Uh, okay. I, was, I was wondering if you had okay, okay. those issues. Okay. Uh, actually, the protocol of ocean base is not the same as Oracle. We have imp we have ocean base is compatible to Oracle. A user can use the Oracle AC, uh, OCI stored procedure like uh, like Oracle. Yeah, you can use uh, in ocean base. But uh, we the implementation of ocean base to compatible to Oracle is not is not mock the protocol of Oracle. We just make sure that the behavior of ocean base is the same as Oracle, but the protocol of ocean base, for example, the client server protocol of got ocean it, base comes from my MySQL. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it, got it. And the answer to Gavin's question is like, how can you patent a wire protocol? You don't need to patent it too. So okay. that's, that's, that's the answer there. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, the, uh, in MySQL compatibility, we are compatible to MySQL database. Got it, got it. Okay, yeah. I understand. The, the protocol, okay. Okay, this makes more sense. Okay, awesome. All right, guys. All right, so uh, Charlie, thank you so much for, for being with us. Uh, this is very, very interesting.